Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rahim. Our dearest viewers from across the world, Allah ajurna wa ajurukum min musabina Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. We extend our condolences to you all upon commemorating the murder of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and his dear family and companions in the land of Karbala on the day of Ashura. And across these nights, we've also been ensuring that we extend our condolences to the one who will come and avenge this blood, none other than our dear awaited Saviour, may Allah hasten his reappearance. We've been covering the shuhada in the past few nights, and tonight we dedicate it to an individual whose name in any Shia household is called multiple and multiple and multiple times. Not just his, but his father's too. His sole purpose of creation was to serve on this day and to serve his master, who coincided to be his brother. None other than Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam, the flag bearer, the one that every single one of the children would look up to, the one that the women would seek refuge in, when in fear, and the one that Imam al Hussein relied upon so much that it was only upon the death of Al Abbas where Imam al Hussein said, Now my back has broken. Such was the important nature and role of Abu Fadl to the events of Karbala and to Imam Hussein's life. He spent his whole life serving this family and ended it in the service of this family as well, Abu Fadl Abbas And we've been connecting through deriving lessons, but also through poetry. And my dear brother Ali Fadl has been delivering those words. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum to the dear viewers and the remembrance of Abu Fadl Abbas And every year that when Muharram nears, everyone um, tentatively waits for the, for the night of Abu Fadl Abbas, be it for a build-up of, of needs and hajat and prayers and they, they feel like the power of Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam and his position amongst Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be able to, to help them in their, in their, in their cause and in their, uh, in their needs as well. So it's definitely a night that uh, is considered one of the most important in the, in the Shia Islamic calendar. And, uh, and from an emotional point of view, where do you start? I mean, is it his, his relationship with Sayyid Zainab alayhi salam or is it his, his uh, his position amongst the children and how much they relied on him and how much they looked up to him or is it him and his brother or is there's so many different factors that you can consider when it comes to the tragedy of Abu Fadl Abbas even the way he he was martyred as well that in itself and the words that he recited and his stance there there's so much you can take from Abu Fadl Abbas and it is no coincidence that there's a shrine as big as Imam Hussain in Karbala uh, al muqaddas in, in, in and of course we we recognize that he wasn't a ma'asum necessarily but it's someone that we connect with that little bit more to say, okay, well, he wasn't a, a normal man, but as in he's someone that we can resonate with and say, you know what, okay, maybe I can get close to those heights. Maybe, you know, this is a man who, yeah, I mean, repeating everything we've just said, a, a man who, even though we commemorate and cry on his martyrdom, he, he fills us as the Shia with pride and, and, a sense of protection and, and valor that is just within us. And I remember when, when I was young, in our tradition, we would wrap a green cloth around our, around our wrists and it would be given out on the night of Abu Fadl. My mum would take one and on every exam that I would do, every morning she'd come in before she left for work, wrap it around my wrist and that's it for Abu Fadl salam. And even when you go to Karbala and you, inshallah, our viewers, you get the chance to, to conduct the walk, the walk from Najaf to Karbala. I distinctly remember one moment whereby we're with a very you know, young group, age, age 20s to 30s. And you've been walking for two to three days. This build up of going to Karbala has really been there since months since you've booked your tickets. And for many of us, it was the first time. And we're going down and you see those signs, welcome to Karbala. And you, 
it's a really it's like a red herring because you're still 40 kilometers away 30 kilometers away but so you the anticipation's building 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 and eventually i remember we get to a point where there's a slight turn and there was another security checkpoint very normal and we're just waiting there i remember being at the back like, okay this one's taking longer than usual you know what's going on there's a slight turn and you're like okay what's the big oh and it hits you and it's abu fadl abbas alayhi salam his shrine, it's so far, and it's just staring at you. And there were three reactions. Number one, people just stopped, stalled, froze, like just didn't know what to do. Second reaction, the group got split, people started running, just completely irrespective of the distance still left, that's it, they were gone. And the third, people just collapsed and just in admiration and awe exactly and this is Abu Fadr alayhi salam even after his death he's looking over can this person enter to come and see my brother can you enter and come and see my you must go through me because I'm still protecting my brother even though I'm just meters away you must go through me and this is this energy that Abu Fadr gives you in anything that you do is something to, to hold on to and, and cling on to but Something that breaks the heart of Abu Fadr alayhi salam and you hear the recitations around his shrine when you go to his shrine and where you hear people lamenting about Sayyidah Ruqayya alayhi salam. It's something that was so dear, someone that was so dear to Abu Fadl and it was his mission to bring back that water for the children and hence when you drink water it's so highly recommended to remember Imam Hussein and Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam and it's it's on this note that I, I wanted to just narrate a hadith from our holy sixth Imam alayhi salam, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, where a man called Dawood al-Raqi, he says that one day he was with Imam al-Sadiq and uh, Imam al-Sadiq asked for some water. Imam al-Sadiq drank this and after he drank it, his eyes started to fill with tears and he started to cry. And the Imam said, O oh Dawood, May Allah's curse be upon the killers of Hussein. Verily, if a slave of Allah drinks water, remembering Hussein alayhi salam and cursing his killers, Allah will register 100,000 good deeds for him. He will wipe 100,000 bad deeds from his book of deeds and will add 100,000 ranks to his status. And it will be as if he has freed 100,000 slaves. And on the day of judgment, Allah will resurrect him with his heart filled with peace. And this was Abu Fadl's mission, to bring that water back for the children, for his master, for his Imam. And Imam Salih is telling us, just remember, remember, Imam Hussein at that moment of drinking and of course there are the famous lines of poetry where Abu Fadl eventually reaches that river and this lesson is so beautiful that in such desperation and thirst and difficulty and we, we always talk about this you know this heat of Karbala we always the heat of Karbala the burning sand it's the classic phrases and I remember when, when I had the opportunity to go for Hajj in Arafah and it's recommended to do a Salah uh, after Dhuhr and Asr on the actual sand in Arafah I couldn't even walk four steps before my feet were burning and then we had a mat and it was burning through the mat and it was only then I started to appreciate okay this burning sand isn't just a metaphor it's actually it's a reality it burns your feet so Abu Fadl has gone through this whole journey to get to the water he puts his hand into this cold water and he then starts reciting his lines of poetry that how can I take this before my master Hussein? And that in itself, if it's, if it's not loyalty to your brother, if it's not conviction to go back to the children, if it's not, you know, forget me before anyone else, it's this level of self-discipline more than anything else that he could even be in such desperation and still abstain. And we're not talking about abstaining from a sin. So from just abstinence from, from just drinking water. And that willpower that he had should be something we can learn from to say, you know what, if our father can go through such difficulty and abstain from something so trivial and normal, 
then when I'm faced with the difficulty, let me seek inspiration from him to abstain from the sin or, or to abstain from something makhruh. And this is the first thing we can take. A second thing that of course we always associate with Abu Fadl is that, is that loyalty, that valor, that, you know, we always, whenever there's pictures, you know, drawn of what Abu Fadl could have been like, it's a tall man on a horse, he's strong, he's muscly, but he held that standard for Imam al Hussein. He held that flag that represented that army. It was when that flag fell that we knew the time was, was soon for the, for the death of Imam Hussein. But what allowed him to carry it wasn't just his physicality, but it was his spiritual strength. It was his mannerism to say that if someone looks up to this flag and associates it with Islam, if the bearer of that flag is not someone who holds the mannerisms of an akhlaq, of an Islami, of a Husseini, then why are they carrying it? Abu Fadl had this responsibility. He had those characteristics. And it's something for us to reflect upon. If we are carrying the flag in Arba'een, or if we are wearing the badge of Imam Hussein on our lapel, or if we're wearing a t-shirt with the name of Hussein with organizations on it, or if we're wearing an Ahl Bayt society hoodie, we are representing, we are flag bearers of the religion, of those names. And we need to question, do we actually have those merits? Do we have those level of mannerism and akhlaq to actually hold such important symbols upon us? For if, God forbid, someone were to see us commit a sin or something unlawful whilst being a flag bearer of this, then we've done a grave, grave deed, especially if, that's some, if, if the person that had seen it had then associated Islam with such mannerisms. So seek inspiration from Abu Fadl in that. If you're, going to get, if you're going to carry this message, then carry the akhlaq of a true Husseini. And if you want to know a true Husseini, you look to Abbas salam. And of course, after the death of Abbas salam, Sayyid Zainab was one of those that picked up that standard as well. Another true example of a Husseini. Someone who had those characteristics and together they were inseparable almost, one relied upon the other. You know, we say that Sayyidah Zainab relied upon Abu Fadl for so many things, but no doubt he relied upon her. Sayyidah Zainab was the, was the sister of Imam Hussein, was the daughter of Imam Ali she, He would seek inspiration from her as well, the patience that she, that, that she illustrated. And that relationship of Abu Fadl to Sayyidah Zainab is one that goes down in history. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's, it's one of the most emotional um, tragedies associated with Karbala because of the fact that these two pillars of patience um, and Sayyid Zainab is actually referred to as the mountain of patience um, within uh, a small shrine which resembled uh, or highlights the place upon which you would see the, the massacre of Imam Sayyid Salaam, Tilla Zainabiyah, the mountain of, uh, mountain of uh, Zainabiyah they call it. So she, and on it it says, uh, oh mountain of patience. So these two people who, who represented so much and had such a massive stake or had a, a massive influence on the story of Karbala, for, for them to come together um, and, and the discussions that they have together, so before the day of Ashura, the night before, you know, they, they, they talk with each other to reminisce the times that they were with their father or reminisce the time they were with their grandfather. Um, and then both of them know and realize their duty. It's not an issue of, 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 of one side being very fragile and frail, uh, relying on the other. It's no, both of them are there's an admiration between the both, knowing that the day after is going to be a day where they're going to be tested to the maximum limit that they that they possibly can can take, and it's this relationship which I want to um, really delve into uh, with this poem because it's it's straight after the martyrdom of Abu Al Abbas and it, the 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 really desperate situation Abu Al Abbas would be in is that he was. He, he, and by the way, Abu Abbas didn't actually go out to fight. Mm. And this is the scary thought, that he didn't actually go out to fight. He, di he didn't, like every other companion, be being granted permission to fight the enemy and, and, and be martyred. He only went, his sole mission was to get the water for the children. Now, of course, there was combat, but it wasn't, 
it wasn't combat like he was full fledged into the battlefield. It was, you know, he was trying to get the water, and on the way back there was enemies and stuff. And and to the extent his his might and his power was, they had to hide behind palm trees in order to um, in order to dislodge him and and, and take him down. So the, it's his desperation to say to Zainab saying in this poem. Just forget me, just forget me, and bear my absence, O oh mother of tragedy. Just forget me, just forget me. Because I know hurt you will every memory. It has all passed, and in your past, you walked away from me lying by the river, and in your head. Voices taunted, saying he does not recall you, nor does he care. How much it must have hurt you to walk away when you were so used to me crying out, stay. How much it must have hurt you to walk away When you were so used to me crying out Stay When you were so used to me crying out Stay Don't think of me don't recall me, for I won't be there to ease your calamity. Just forget me, just forget me, because I know what you will every memory. I know your gaze into my eyes Wanted to soothe every pain and all my worries I know it hurts, but you should know that it was only your sight that brought me ease. And I sleep with an arrow in my eye. And the words that will command all your tears dry. And now I sleep with an arrow in my eye. And the words that will command all your tears dry. And the hands that will come and all your tears dry. Don't expect me, don't await me. I have left all that I've loved for the Lord's decree. Just forget me, just forget me, because I know, because I know what you will every memory. Upon my chest you left your tears 
a place for your tears on my shirt I had promised but this promise I've broken it and left in a moonless night all that I once missed and if you want your two eyes dried when you're alone forget of my hands and dry them with your own and if you want your two eyes dried when you're alone Forget my hands and dry them with your own. Forget my hands and dry them with your own. Do not hate me, just forgive me, because I won't forgive myself for your worry. Just forget me, just forget me, because I know hurt you will every memory. Of course, many thanks to the poet Nuri Sanda. We we look up to Abu Father alayhi he's, salam. He's an inspiration for us, especially for for this concept of loyalty and and brotherhood and the, the close-knit relationship that he had with Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And it's, it's all well and good us saying, Ya Abu Father, we wish we could be like you. Ya Abu Father, please let us be like you. Please help us to be like you. But sometimes we have to take a very, very clear reality check. And we need to see, okay, well, if we were to almost start to raid ourselves to see how far along the path we are to reaching the level of Abu Fadr alayhi salam. It, it paints really grim pictures for us. Uh, my, I talk of myself first before anyone. And just briefly, I want to see perhaps introspectively for us all that, that are watching, where do we actually stand? Where do we stand in terms of this loyalty to our brothers? And brothers can extend to your, your blood brothers, your cousins, your, your friends or whoever. Take it as you will. Imam Ali السلام, he says, let none of you compel his brother to ask if you already know about his need. I.e., don't make your brother ask for something if you already know he needs something. If you already know that he needs five pounds to get home, don't make him go through the embarrassment of asking. Don't try and hide away from it and, you know, yeah, just leave him to the side and really hope that he doesn't ask because you don't want to part away with your money or your time or whatever. Oh, Ali's saying, just if you know he's in need, just give. That should be the level of your loyalty and your brother to someone. Should be to that extent. But it begs the question of then saying, you know, how forthcoming are we? If I, so many times I know X person needs that or Y person needs that and I'm shying away or I'm looking away to make sure that he doesn't make eye contact with me, he doesn't come to ask me. I'm not even at the stage of giving it to him without him even asking. I'm at the stage of trying to ignore and actively ignore and turn away. And that's the first step. Where do we actually rate ourselves if we want to reach that brotherhood and loyalty of Abu Father, enable him to have that brotherhood? Where do we stand in that regard? A second hadith from Ali salam, where he splits it into two parts, he says, Test your brothers with two things which they must possess. Otherwise, so test your brother with two things which they must possess otherwise. And it's very interesting here in the hadith, he says, Test your brothers with two things which they must possess. Otherwise, avoid them, avoid them, avoid them. He says, Avoid them three times if they do not hold these characteristics. A very clear statement now coming from Ali. What are these two things? The first thing is. Observing the prayers at their prescribed times. 101 Islam, which I'm guilty of for sure. How can I be so 
in love with Abu Fadl and want to reach that loyalty and want to have that brotherhood with people when I can't even upkeep those prayers so no one's really going to want to have that brotherhood with me. They don't, those who are off that level are seeking those who at the time of Salat al-Dhuhr or Salat al-Asr, if you split your prayers, whatever it is, am I a person that they can rely on to remind them of their prayers? Because if not, Imam Ali is saying what? He's not saying, okay, put them to the side. He's saying, avoid them, avoid them, avoid them. It's, it's deep. It's scary almost. And one way in which we can actually try and do this, and it's a very practical way to try and emphasize or try and help yourself to reach a level of importance with your salah is this. We've mentioned this notion of submission to Allah. So at that time of salah, try and ask yourself that question. If I'm on my emails and the time of salah comes, Allah is calling me to pray and I'm on my emails. At that point in time, if I go and pray, I'm submitting to God before anything else. But if I continue on my emails, am I submitting to my emails over my Lord? And it's a scary, scary thought. And it can be applied to anything, whether it's work, whether it's time with your family, whether it's time on the TV, whether it's time, etc., etc. At that time of salah, and I, again, I say this to myself before anyone, at that time of salah, try and make that question connect in your head by continuing the action that I am, instead of going there to go and pray, Am I now actually submitting to this rather than my Lord? Imam Ali is telling us, those brothers, the qualities that you should look for amongst them, test them in, in two ways. And one of them is, do they offer their prayers on time? Otherwise, if not, avoid them, avoid them, avoid them. And the second part that Imam Ali says about how to test a brother is helping brothers during hardship as well as ease. So it's very similar to what we mentioned before about trying to anticipate what they need and giving it to them. But this is helping the brother during hardship and ease. And it begs that question of to what mile am I going to go to? If, okay, fine, he needs five pounds to get home. Well, yeah, fine, take it, that's fine. It's not really difficult for me to part with that. But if a brother's actually in a hardship, am I going to travel? two hours, three hours, one hour, a hundred pounds, thousand pounds, whatever. What, to what mile am I going to go to actually pass this test of trying to ensure that when he's in hardship, I'm there. So that when he falls into difficulty, his family falls into difficulty, the first person he calls is me. Because if you want to reach that level of loyalty with Abu Fadl السلام, that he had with his brother, Imam Hussein السلام, had no hesitation in calling Abu Fadl at any time. Because he was there in hardship, he was there in ease. He was trained for this. So we should train ourselves. Will we be there in times of hardship for the closest companions of our holy 12th Imam? Or are we going to be the guys at the back, shying away, taking the easier things? Imam Ali again to remind you is saying, if you do not pass that test, then this sort of brother, avoid them, avoid them, avoid them. And of course, we know that Abu Fadl passed this test with flying colors. He was a man who responded to that need of Imam Hussein at any time, any day, any moment, any request, anything, he was there to respond. And Allah then rewards Abu Fadl for gift, Allah rewards Abu Fadl for being there for Imam Hussein and being the responder of his needs to then saying, you can now be Bab al-Hawa'ij, a person who will respond to the needs of those who are the lovers of Aba Abdullah. So we look to him as this man who can intercede for us, who can be that accelerator for us towards Allah, that can take our prayer of, oh Allah, forgive me for this. And I ask you through Abu Fadl alayhi salam, it's that vehicle to Allah that gets us there so much quicker than what our du'a would go through barrier after barrier. For he earned this station. He earned this station through his loyalty that he displayed to his brother Aba Abdullah al-Hussein and it's Bab al-Hawaj. I mentioned earlier that that green 
wristband and it's something that my wife and I now hold very dear to us, having that flag of Abbas in your house. It's that source of inspiration that then when you go and visit him, you say, Ya Abu Fadl, thank you. Thank you for all those times when I needed something, I'd call out to you to take my du'a closer to Allah. You never turn me away. And inshallah, long may that continue, Ya Abu Fadl. Abu Fadl Abbas as well, just to continue from that, it's not just one or two stances that gave him this position of, of, of Bab al-Hawaj. It's not just Karbala as well that represented his, his victory in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's, as we were mentioning, his sole purpose of being alive from, from when he was a baby up until his martyrdom was to serve the holy household. And this, this was fed from none other than Umm al-Banin whose, again, sole purpose was to serve the holy household. So it was, it was, it was fed into him by the milk of his mother. And so he, it grew within him, so he, he, he couldn't think of any other way. And there was a, a, a moment, a stance, a couple, there was more than one stance in, in, in Karbala. But there was a moment as well when Shimr was to call out to Abu al Abbas and say to him, Oh cousin, we can give you a pardon, just go against the, your brother Hussein. And then he, he didn't even apologize, he said to him, I am no one compared to the grandson of Imam Hussein salam, and the grandson of your prophet, not just anyone, the grandson of the prophet that you, so you, uh, you believe in, apparently, you want to offer me a pardon, but not the grandson of the prophet. You must be... Just, just must one be, point there, if I may. Yeah. It's, uh, it teaches us something very beautiful there, that Abu Fadl alayhi salam, as we said, there are cousins, there are relatives of his in the army that he's about to go and fight or as he said, goes to the water and has to kill along the way. Yet the, tr the, 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 the point between Haq and Batir is so clear for him. And again, very applicable to us day to day. If our family or a relative says you must do this just because it pleases the family. If it goes against the Sharia, if it goes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will, Seek inspiration from Al Abbas. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid to say no. Yeah. And if that wasn't enough to to make a stand and and uh, back Imam Al Hussein in public, and then in private, he goes to, as you were saying, he goes to the river or the scorching heat, and then reaches the water, and he says, "Ya nafs min ba'd al Hussein huni." Which means, O oh self, annihilate you, annihilate yourself, O oh self, annihilate yourself in front of Hussein. So, meaning any desire that you have, any desire for indulgence or whatever it is, any desire that you have, annihilate that feeling when it comes to Imam Hussein. And this is the pinnacle of submission to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the will of Imam Hussein, which was amazing to see. And that's why we say in the poem, "I see you, Abbas, as the crown that sits on my head." And your name it flows beautifully in each tear I shed. All are in awe of you, Abbas, I adore you in each tear I shed. I see you, Abbas, as the crown that sits on my head. And your name it flows beautifully in each tear I shed. All are in awe of you, Abbas, I adore you in each tear I shed. In each tear I shed Our oh, immortal flag that against the wind flies Our oh, mountain that alone can hold seven skies Oh, who could not bear to hear those children's cries I tell you that your name Abbas never dies I tell you that your name Abbas never dies Generations sit and in awe of you they listen And your name sparkles in the tears that on them glisten Watch them, they ache for you Abbas, I adore you 
and each tear I shed, and each tear I shed. Oh, diamond that your virtues found and made rare. Oh, he who has left souls frozen by his glare. Oh, he who cares for those that are without care. You have hearts knocking on your door everywhere. You have hearts knocking on your door everywhere. All of your father's lovers share an understanding. If they have a need at your door, they will be standing, knocking, waiting for you. Abba, as I adore you, in each tear I shed. O oh, lion that waiting to serve would kneel. O oh, volcano that erupts with your zeal. For you standing with no toe surreal. O oh, Abbas, we know you and know how you feel. O oh, Abbas, we know you and know how you feel. You stood there confused as the water poured to the ground. Every drop that falls came for you, a torturing sound. Confused, we witness you, Abbas, I adore you. In each tear I shed. You loved them so much it was almost unfair. Your eyes would light up and burn with their despair. Who heard them? Your thunder would burn out their air. Bodies for these girls' tears, to you it was fair. Bodies for these girls' tears, for you it was fair. Your heart had a gate and no one would dare open it. These girls had a key, they'd come and inside your heart sit. Their touch, it comforts you. Abbas, I adore you in each tear I shed. You reshaped love and you called its brotherhood. Yusuf wishes that in Hussein's place he stood. Oh, flag bearer, have you not yet understood? Even love would sing your praises if it could. Even love would sing your praises if it could. Don't you understand, O oh, highest peak of selflessness? You are a symbol to oceans of hearts in distress. Are you aware of you? Abbas, I adore you. In each tear I shed, in each tear I shed. Many thanks to the poet Nuri Sardar. We adore Abbas alayhi salam to levels that each of us have an individual level of love towards him and indeed towards his brother Imam Hussein alayhi salam which creates this yearning for us to conduct their ziyarah and the ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. But of course for many of us the distance is great. There is a long distance between us being able to reach the holy land of Karbala. But do not despair, for Imam al-Sadiq tells us how to conduct the ziyara if you are from far. He has a conversation with a man named Sadr and he says, Oh Sadr, how difficult is it for you to perform the ziyara of the grave of Hussein salam five times every Friday and once every day? So he replies and he says, may I, may, may, may I sacrifice myself for you? There is a great distance between us and his grave. So Imam Sadiq replies and he says, Ascend to the roof of your house. Look to the right and then look to the left. Raise your head towards the sky 
and then try to face the direction of the grave of Hussein and say, Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah, Assalamu alayka wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And by doing so, a Zawra will be registered for you, and Zawra is the performance of a Hajj and an Umrah. And as a result, Sadr then added, he said, after hearing this, there were times when I would perform this ziyarah 20 times during the day, 20 times. So inshallah, may we be able to conduct this ziyarah many times for our own home, even though we are at distance, inshallah. How many years have we wept in the eye your name is kept? Hussein will never forget. When the month of grief descends, the love of your name ascends, and with its tears the eye sends. Hearts were not made to be torn, O reason that tears are born, but for you hearts break and mourn. You died but live in the heart, your story tears hearts apart, your head from body they part. You tied heaven to the earth and you gave heaven its worth. Muhammad wept with your birth. Muhammad wept with your birth. On this night, all of our du'as, we ask to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Bab al Hawaj, Abu Fadl Abbas, السلام, and amongst those du'as, O oh, Abu Fadl, allow us to visit you and your dear brother. We ask you to take this dua and take it to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, may it be granted and all of our hajats on these nights. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.